living. Hey, for it being tutoring, 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 tutor be mad, I've got neck. For it being tutoring, for it being tutoring. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's lesson is going to be about subtracting fractions. All right, let's check this out. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that anytime you're adding or subtracting fractions, you must have a common denominator, and preferably the lowest common denominator, the least common denominator, the LCD. You got to have that, all right? So keep that in mind. And if you need to brush up on finding the LCD, please check out our video, Finding the LCD or LCM. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's check this problem out. In problem number one, we have 7 fifteenths minus 2 fifteenths. We do have a common denominator already. So all you'll have to do is subtract the numerators together. So 7 minus 2 gives me a result of 5 over that common denominator of 15. Remember that when subtracting or adding fractions, your denominator stays the same even when you're adding or subtracting. So here, I subtracted 7 minus 2 to get 5. That denominator must stay the same. And you are always responsible for simplifying your results. So we need to have a reduced fraction. Always reduce your fractions if you can. Notice that both 5 and 15 can be reduced by 5. All right. So if you need help simplifying your fractions, we got a video for that too. So simplify your fractions. All right. Simplifying fractions. I'll go ahead and put a link at the bottom of the screen. Do you see it? You see it? It's down there. It's down there right there down there all right you can click on that if you're on a computer if not if you're on a mobile device you'll probably have to find it but it's called simplifying fractions mm -hmm. from Fortman tutoring so let's continue I'm gonna reduce the numerator by 5 and the denominator by 5 so this gives me 1 over 3 and done yep I'm about to red box it because it's over that's the end result there it is one third is the answer let's move on to problem number two Mm -hmm. In problem number two, I do not have a common denominator. So remember, that finding the LCD is either going to be the largest of the numbers that you're given as denominators, or it's going to be a multiple of the larger number. So since three will not go evenly into eight, I'm looking for a multiple of eight that three can go into evenly. So uh, eight times one is eight. That's not going to work. Uh, eight times two is 16. Uh, that's not going to work. Eight times three is 24. Hmm. Yeah, 3 goes into 24 evenly. So I'm going to use 24. I'm going to use 24. All right. So I'm going to set up my framework here with denominators of 24. Our next step is to get an equivalent fraction. Remember, we're changing the denominator from 3 to 24. So because we're making that change, we'll need to make the same change to the numerator as well to keep the value of the fraction the same. Mm -hmm. It's called finding equivalent fractions. So what I'll do is I'll multiply 3 times 8 in order to get 24, which means that the numerator must also be multiplied by 8 as well. So 3 times 8 is 24, 2 times 8 gives me 16, and 16 24 has the same value as 2 thirds. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that same process to this 3 eighths here. 8 was multiplied 3 times to get 24, so I'll need to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. So 3 times 3 is 9. All right. So notice, ladies and gentlemen, this 8 over 8 and this 3 over 3, those values are 1. So we're not changing the end result value. We're just changing the way it looks when we're finding equivalent fractions. But now that I have this 16 24 minus this 9 24 we can go ahead and subtract finally, right? So 16 minus 9 gives us 7 over our common denominator of 24 and that gives me the answer of 7 24 done and done just like that ladies and gentlemen you got it mm-hmm moving on to the next problem problem number three I have 5 14 minus 4 21st the first number that 14 and 21 will be able to go into evenly is gonna be 42 that's it 42 here so I had to multiply 14 times 3 so I'll need to multiply 5 times 3 and that gives me an equivalent fraction of 15 40 seconds yep then I'll multiply 21 times 2 to give me 42 and so therefore 4 times 2 gives me a result of 8 now that we have equivalent fractions with common denominators we can go ahead and subtract the numerators so 15 minus 8 is 7 over 42. Remember, you're always responsible for simplifying your result, and it just so turns out that 7 and 42 can both be divided by 7. So 7 divided by 7 and 42 divided by 7 will give us our reduced result, which will be 1 sixth, and that's it. 
Done and done. We had 7 divided by 7, which gave us 1, and 42 divided by 7, which gave us 6. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Done and done for problem number 3, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on to the next problem. We have problem number 4. With problem number 4, I have 10 elevenths minus 4 fifths. The first number that 11 and 5 will go into evenly is going to be 55. So I'm changing both denominators to 55, setting up my framework here. And then remember, whatever I had to multiply the original denominator by is exactly what I'll need to multiply the numerator by to keep it balanced, to keep an equivalent fraction going, right? So 11 times 5 is 55, and 10 times 5 gives me 50. 5 was multiplied 11 times to get 55, so I'll need to multiply 4 times 11 as well. And 4 times 11 gives me 44. Next, we'll go ahead and subtract 50 minus 54 gives me 6 over 55. 6 and 55 do not have anything in common, so we can't simplify it any further. So this is our answer, 6 55ths, done and done. All right, let's move on. Next problem, ladies and gentlemen. We have number 5, which is 3 fourths minus 5 thirteenths. So, in this problem, I'll need to find the first multiple of 4 and 13 that they have in common, and that number is 52. Yep, 4 goes into 52, and 13 goes into 52. 4 goes into 52 13 times, and so I'll need to multiply the numerator by 13 as well to give me 39. 3 times 13 is 39. 13 was multiplied 4 times to get 52, so 5 times 4 gives me a result of 20. So now, we have equivalent fractions with common denominators, now I can subtract the numerators together. 39 minus 20 is 19 over our denominator of 52. And this is our answer, ladies and gentlemen. 19 and 52 don't have any common factors. And that's it. That's the answer. So that was number five. Number six, we have 7 fifteenths minus 5 twelfths. The first number that 15 and 12 have in common is 60. Mm-hmm. Yep. 60, ladies and gentlemen. 15 was multiplied 4 times to get 60. So 7 times 4 gives me 28. 12 was multiplied 5 times to get 60. So 5 times 5 is 25. Now, subtracting 28 minus 25 will give me 3 over 60. And it just so turns out that both 3 and 60 can be divided by 3. That means I can simplify my result. So dividing the numerator by 3 and the denominator by 3, I end up with... 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 60 divided by 3 gives me 20, so my answer is 1 20th. Done and done. Ladies and gentlemen, this completes subtracting fractions from Fort Bend Tutoring. This is Mr. Witt. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and peace. So what you waiting on? Everything is online. Just hit the website. They even got FaceTime. Subscribe to the YouTube. Request the video. Watch your math skills go from all right to incredible. They got math, got algebra, got geometry. Pre-cal calculus, can't forget trigonometry.